It's a coin flip between it going up and it going down. But what we do know is the supply of Bitcoin from the miners will halve. So over time, there's less new supply, and therefore the supply has to be met by existing participants selling. Now, considering about 60... In the past two weeks, there hasn't been much trading in cryptocurrency. Most of them are down more than 10%. After hitting multi-year highs this month, new data shows that the first demand and price growth was led by Bitcoin ETS. After 10 days of rises with negative to flat flows, prices are down even though there have been pullbacks. The industry thinks that Bitcoin will reach a new high at midnight Eastern Standard Time on April 19, 2024. Experts think that Bitcoin and other digital assets will reach new all-time highs after senior Bloomberg ETF specialist Eric Bonus denied recent Bitcoin ETF flow criticism. Eric thinks that demand for ETFs will surge after their break. Some of the post language suggests that ETF groupings drop off after a big jump. After five days of 12% price drops, this speed is very important. Second, interest has slightly dropped after five days. Since the beginning of the year, the 10 has lost $223 million, which is equal to 0.44% of its assets' net inflows. Third, the new 9 have seen $330 million in the last five days, with BlackRock's IBIT making it 67 days. Bitcoin drives that net amount. Eric also thinks that crypto experts selling their Bitcoin at all-time highs caused the 12% drop. Bitcoin has made 144% since June and 47% so far this year, more than any other asset class. Our pal, CEO of Real Vision, is positive about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. A friend thinks the price of Bitcoin will go up 54% to $400,000 before the cycle ends. Altcoin Daily asked the well-known macro expert what he thought would happen in the crypto bull market and with crypto assets in 2024. Quotes from interviews, subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a review, and turn on alerts for future videos. Thanks and have fun with the movie. You help YouTube's algorithm and account growth. 80% to 80 of all Bitcoin holders don't sell, they just hold. There's actually quite limited supply around. So when you add in a kind of macro bull market, it tends to then tilt the supply-demand imbalance wildly in favor of demand. Not enough supply, too much demand add the ETF in, and that adds more FOMO. It's easier for people to get in. And before you know it, you start building this banana zone cycle. So the halving itself is a non-event. Um, it's really, it's the signal that you're about to come into crypto summer, which happens to coincide with the presidential election years every time. And it also corresponds with what I call the everything code cycle, which is the debt refinancing cycle, which is the macro cycle. They're all the same thing. So you get this kind of powerful dynamic of politicians giving out free candy because they're going into an election stimulus. You tend to have a liquidity cycle because of the business cycle, because they have to refinance the debts of the governments. And you tend to have the Bitcoin halving, which is a reduction in supply. And that's why these periods get really quite exciting. If slash when the Federal Reserve cuts rates for the first time in years later this year, what will that mean for crypto? I think it's been anticipated by the markets, um, but it just, at top level, if you think of most people who've got credit card debts or mortgages or interest payments on cars, it just makes everybody's life a little bit easier. And if you've got a little bit more discretionary spending, you might be able to put it into the market. And so at the, at the margin, it'll help. I mean, obviously it would help a lot if rates went down to 2%, are they going to get there or not? Certainly not this year. Maybe next year. Depends what happens to inflation. Depends what happens on a number of different levels. But really, it's not interest rates that actually drive the world. It's liquidity. Liquidity is the money that the, the central banks put into the system, often in conjunction with the government, to try and generate economic growth or drive markets. And we bottomed in liquidity, I think, again, last time we spoke, back in November 2020, uh, two, 2022. That was the bottom of the liquidity cycle. It happened to be the bottom of the crypto cycle and bottom of technology, because those are the forward-looking asset classes. And going forward, my work suggests that liquidity should continue to ease all the way into 2025. 
Um, so therefore, if we've got rising liquidity against this backdrop, it should be positive. And by the way, to your credit, the last time I had you on or back in end of 2022, I asked you, are you worried about a recession coming? And you said the recession's now, you know, people are the most depressed now, it'll only get better. And you turned out to be right to your credit. Um, so I want to go forward thinking, maybe in a longer term time span, are you in the Michael Saylor camp that Bitcoin will most likely hit a million dollars? Yeah. So how I back this out is two different ways. One, I just look at the log chart of Bitcoin. That trend, you can extrapolate it. And somewhere around 2030, it'll be a million dollars. That sounds as ridiculous today as it did when I first bought it at $200 and I put a price projection of $100,000. Uh, I said it's actually going to a million, but I'm going to discount myself for being an idiot by 90%. So it cost $200. It could go to zero at that time, certainly, because that was 2013. But my price projection's 100000 And people said, this is ridiculous. I said, it's the best macro trade of all time. So the million dollars doesn't seem that preposterous. Um, the other way I back it out is when I look at the adoption of cryptocurrency. So you use as a proxy the number of active wallets. Now, we all know that's not a perfect proxy because people have multiple wallets. But you compare that to IP addresses for the internet. Start them at both 5 million. Now, people have multiple IP addresses as well. So it's very similar. It's just directionally gives you an idea. Crypto is growing at twice the speed of the internet in terms of adoption. So it's the fastest adoption of any technology and any asset class the world has ever seen. So if we just assume that growth slows, as it did with the internet, because once you get bigger and bigger numbers, it's hard to grow at such a rate. So it goes from, let's say, 175% a year where it's been trending and goes to 43% a year, which is what the internet did from year eight onwards. Well, crypto gets to a billion people by the end of next year a billion active wallets, and it gets to 4 billion by 2030. Well, at 4 billion, the price will certainly be a million dollars. So it kind of backs out from the adoption of the technology and of the log chart, because the log chart basically is the adoption of the technology. For this cycle, this is a question just for fun. How high range-wise do you see Bitcoin going? It's difficult to know what kind of cycle we're going to be dealing with. There's a School of thought that says it's a left translated cycle, which means it goes up fast early and then peaks early. Most would finish in 2025 in December. That's normally how these crypto cycles have finished. That that third year would be the a December, November kind of period. So could it come earlier and peter out this year? There's definitely a probability of that. What price would that be? I would say. 200,000, something like that. And that would be, okay, that's gone very far, very fast. The most likely outcome is a standard bull market. Now, the last one we had, 2020, 2021, was actually a stunted cycle because really the final leg never happened. We had a huge final leg in 2017 and an even more enormous one in 2013. But last time around, we didn't get one, which caught everybody off surprise, including myself. So somewhere that would be, you know, Bitcoin gets to, let's say, 200 to 250,000 um, peak somewhere between the summer and the end of the year. OK, that seems pretty reasonable. The other probability is that we have a full bubble cycle because now there's more access to it by the ETFs. There's more acceptance. There's more regulatory acceptance. Um, it captures more mind share. There's like 110 million Coinbase wallets and only about 10 million are active right now. So that number can go up dramatically. So we can see a huge participation um, and a final kind of belief that this is this is it. That could happen. And in which case, then you would see an extension to maybe 400,000 plus in this cycle. Um, but I would give the... Short cycle and the bubble cycle, roughly the same probabilities and probably more earnings. The well-known macro expert says this is one of the worst things a cryptocurrency investor, especially a 
What new traders can my friend thinks this is the best chance the world has ever seen and that prices will keep going up sharply over the next few years, even if you don't borrow any money? He thinks Bitcoin will reach at least $1 million per coin by 2030. If you don't borrow any money, you risk losing all of your money before the big rallies.